So I'm doing a little change on this rack today. The way I do it, everybody does it a little different, is shut down the E2 power for the compressor, shut down the control power, and then I'll go through the main power for each compressor. Normally the rack would be running, I just turned it off to make the video. So, shut down the discharge liquid and oil on each compressor, evacuate the refrigerant into the system, drain the oil, there it's clearly marked on these bitzlers, and it is this port on the Copelands. Once you get that done, fill it with oil, perform an evacuation on it, and then open the suction and discharge. I leave the oil closed. By leaving the oil system closed, it isolates this compressor. I'll do that on every single compressor all the way down the line. The last thing I'll do is I'll empty the oil receivers, fill them, and then open all the oil systems back up and then they share. The oil system might need another gallon of oil when I'm done, because I have rejected some oil, but it does prevent from contaminating the oil and keeps the site at temperature. So, let's get it done. Anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. But we just. 
All right, so I got the oil changed and all the compressors. They're all back, but the oil system is still locked out. So now I'm gonna take these two oil receivers. I'm gonna valve them off from the turbo shed. I'm gonna drain those into the bucket. Once I get that done, I'm gonna fill it. I usually fill just to the first second, the second sight glass fills. So these two are matched, so they'll fill and drain parallel. We'll be easy to go. All right, so I got the old oil out, got the new oil in. Both bottoms are full. I have one glass there, but it's easy filling this one first. So now I'm gonna open up my compressors, see where my level is, probably put another gallon in, and uh, then we're done. Just gotta open all my oil lines. 